Let's talk about four different type of line we often use in landscape composition. There are horizontal line. We associate horizontal line with calmness and peace, such as laying down, watching sunset at the beach. We feel peace and rest. Horizontal line also create a sense of space. The space closer to us, horizontal line will appear lower in the picture frame. Further away from us will appear higher in the picture frame. Vertical line, we associate vertical line with the direction of gravity, going up or down. Vertical line create a sense of strength, such as tree, human standing up. Diagonal line, diagonal line often used as a direct viewer eyes to the focal point. Horizontal line and diagonal line can also work together to guide the viewer eyes in the picture frame. Curve line. Curve line create a sense of joy and it is very helpful to connect the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line together to create a sense of unity. Now let's look at Japanese woodprint and see how they use those lines. We have tree here add as a vertical line. Horizontal line appear to be further away from us. The closer from us appear to be on the lower plane of the frame. So here you get the sense of the space. Diagonal line direct our eyes to look at that center point. You have a small curved line that connect vertical, horizontal, and diagonal line together. You can see that in this bridge right here, this is a curve right here, and that's right here. Very similar. Then you have vertical line. It's a vertical line, kind of framing this framing this bow right there. And here is framing this person right here. Now we have a horizontal line. Here's a horizontal line to tell us the space, like how far the space is. Or done by Winslow Homer. So as you can see, the horizontal line is Here. And then you also have some that's kind of right here. So the horizontal line kind of give you a sense of space. Now we have this vertical line. It's also framing it, this section here to be where he wants us, the viewer, to see it. Right? You have this diagonal line right there kind of directing our eyes to see this. Now you have a lot of curve line. It's kind of tie in everything together. And that softness, kind of here's a lot of curve line. Kind of make this um, picture, or like this element, tied it together. So I hope that is helping you to understand three different type of line, horizontal line, vertical line, and diagonal line, the purpose or the effect on the pictures, on the landscape. And then you also has the curve line. It's more organic. It kind of softens the whole pictures and you kind of connect those lines together. So we are going to put this into practice. The first practice that we're going to do is this one right here. 
So first you want to find your, decide whether you want your picture frame to be horizontal or vertical. So I am going to choose a vertical frame, more like it right here. And the reason for that is because I probably going to cut this part off just because that is half the bows is not not that necessary for me. Before we do it, let's figure out about what type of line this one have. This one has a vertical line. I'm sorry, the horizontal line here, here. Kind of give you the sense of space. This is closer to us and it gets further away from us. Here's another one here too. Then we also has vertical line that is framing this boat right there. We have this as almost like a diagonal line right here. And this is kind of right there, pointed out. Now, we also has a little bit of curve line kind of helping us to soften the whole picture frame. A little bit curve right here, a little bit curve right there, a little bit curve right there. Okay, so for my picture frame, I'm going to cut about this section this much right here. You, if you have a phone, you can crop it so it's a little bit easier to see it the whole your design. Okay, so the next thing I want you guys to pay attention to is where you separate the sky and then the ocean or the ground. So you don't want to do half and half. Not saying that you cannot do it, but just avoiding half and half because it's a little bit too even and it's not that exciting to look at it. It's just kind of half and half. But some people make it work. You can try to make it work as well. So here you can see this is my half. So I had to decide whether I want to have more sky to sing or more ocean. I decided to have more ocean. So this is the um, half point right there. So I'm going to separate this line, the horizontal line. This will be the sky and this will be the ocean. And then coming down here, I also has another line. And then right here, you can kind of see almost like a zigzag line. Now I'm going to place this palm tree. The palm tree again, I don't want to place right in the middle. It doesn't mean that you absolutely cannot. I do see some artists that make it work, like Cezanne and also Bernard. They put tree right in the middle and it worked. But we're not going to go to that route. I'm just going to kind of show you the common way and once you know the rule, then it's easier for you to break the rule. So here is the tree. I'm going to make it to about a third. So about right here. And I am not going to make it every single detail. I'm doing the block in, kind of using a straight line to simplify it. Squinch your eyes if you have trouble to see the general shape. So this is my general shape right here. And it's you can put the bolts right here. The bolts will be here. 
Again, it's a very simple shape. Try not to make it too detailed at this time. It looked more like a cake floating at the beach. Okay, right there. So the next thing I wanted to do is to figure out my value, like two value statement, right? Mary talk about this all the time. Uh, Miss Mary and Miss Isabel talk about this, like two value statements. So I would like you guys to make that decision and it doesn't mean that you can only have two value on your final pieces, but we're going to start it with two and then you can break it down to three, four and five and so on. So uh, deciding light and dark. And on this one, I want you guys to kind of separate to light and dark. And right here, just very gently, softly to shade light and dark. Okay, so light or dark. So the sky, I'm going to leave it light because it's further away from us. And but also on the picture here that you see is lighter. So I'm going to do the whole thing. Just darker right there. Doesn't mean it's really dark because we're going to break that into a little bit more. So I will consider the bows. I'm going to leave it just white. The tree also. So the tree area, you can kind of make it break it down a little bit. So it's not just a big blob shape of on the top. It's kind of actually break it down here a little bit. One side of the bow is also darker right there. Okay, so light and dark. And from there, you're going to break this to another one. Then you have gray. So I'm going to using a cross. So you have light, gray, and then dark. So the darker part, I'm going to remain the ocean to be gray. And then the tree, the bottom of the tree right here, the palm tree going to be darker. So part of the bow is a little bit darker here. And then you have this rim right here is a bit, also a little bit darker. You do have this line here. If I turn it out a little bit, you can kind of see that this line right here that is lighter. I can simply just use the eraser to erase that line. Okay, then you can go back and see, I might want to have my foreground, this part right here, just a little bit darker. So I can gradually guide viewers' eyes into the center. So it's kind of gradation, like darker to lighter. And then you can do a little bit right here too. 
darker to lighter. Like the sky here, just kind of make it so your eyes can go into see your uh, pieces. Same thing with this part right here. Do you see how it's guiding our eyes to looking into it? Okay, so I hope this is helpful you to understand about vertical line, horizontal line, diagonal line, and also the curve line, how that affects your landscape. And it's not just a landscape, I'm sure that still life, you can also, or like figure, portrait, you can also find that helpful. I wet my paper with the clear water first and add tea like solarium blue. The sky is darker and warmer on the top because it's closer to us. The cooler and lighter on the bottom because it's further away from us. Because solarium blue is cooler, so I use on my first wash. While the paper is still wet but not running, I then add another layer of ultramarine blue on top to create a gradient wash. Pay attention to the wetness of your paper. If the paper is too wet, you cannot add more layer on top because it will just flow on the paper. Thinking about the sponge, if full of the water, you cannot add more water into it. Your paper is like a sponge. So you have to wait a little, but you cannot wait too long either. I decide to have more sky in my final painting. I lower my horizon and add the tea-like solarium blue first. Then I started to add in more sap green and then ultramarine blue. This layers had to be done before the paper become too damp. I then use the thirsty brushes to lift up the line. I then blow dry my paper to be completely dry. But at the beach, I don't think you need a blow dryer because the heat will dry it very fast. The paper is now completely dry. I can have the hard edges for the palm tree. I use between tea and milk like brushes to add my first layer of light green. I use sap green with a little bit of cami red and cami yellow. You just have to make sure your green is not too bright. For the shadow shape, I use Bavarian green, ultramarine blue, and cadmary red. It is not necessary that you have to use exactly the color that I use, but your goal is to make the green not too bright. To tone down the green, you have to add red or orange. I also add blue to make it cooler. I also use a lot of lifting and add back in the color to make sure my value is more accurate. 